Marcus Conti reporting. Good morning. So I want to do a couple of things today. A couple of uh, some appreciation for some people reaching out to me. I love it, man. Fucking, fucking labor of love. Labor of love paying off. Holy shit, man. So I want to... Um, so I'm gonna. This is this is a very serious subject that uh, I want to talk about. It's uh, is the stock market about to collapse? Because you keep hearing people say, "Oh, the markets. There, there. Something big is gonna happen. There's, it's gonna collapse. There's, there's something going on. Oh, I, I, I saw it in the 4chan, <laughs> right? So let's talk about it. I'll give you <clears throat> my, uh, my uh, take on it based on actual evidence. Actual evidence, actual technical analysis. We'll take a look at that. But uh, I want to talk about H.A. Uh, Goodman Love. <laughs> you got to love that. And um, let's start off with this. This is wonderful, man. Fucking Butler's Bangalong, right? This guy is rocking it, man. This is the guy that did the <clears throat> Frosty the Snowman spoof, right? And it wasn't a spoof. I know that, Be <clears throat> Butler. I know that. You, you're playing off time, man. You're fucking throwing off my song, man. Right? I know that. Because when you played the second part of the song, you played it right. But you, you kind of shit on the first part of the fucking Frosty Snowman and shit. Right? You fucking, I know what you did, man. I know you did that shit on purpose because you thought it was funny. But here's where he redeems himself. You ready? So <clears throat> this is pretty cool, man. You're going to love this shit. <laughs> Watch. 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 This guy rocks, man. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to get the tambourine out for this shit. So he's down in the corner with a mandolin. Watch this shit. We don't agree on everything, but I think we'll agree on this. Watch this shit. Okay. Sing along if you know the words. God bless you. That's pretty cool, right? This fucking the guy's like he's just listening to the he's listening to me play and he's playing along. I love that shit, man. So, yeah, man, we'll keep doing that shit. Keep doing it. Keep throwing them. If I throw something out, I, I mean, I don't always feel like playing, but and don't take this as an interpretation that I want to be in some kind of fucking band because I don't like musicians. Fucking well, musicians don't like me, right? So fuck that shit, man. <clears throat> I'm solo, man. I'm solo. I'm motherfucking solo artist. That's a, this guy doesn't need any introduction. <laughs> he tried good to watch this shit. <laughs> so I did um just a preface yesterday. I did a piece on H. A. Goodman because I love H. A. Goodman. H. A. Goodman has been a uh, a heroic uh, figure, a, a polarizing figure, a guy who speaks his mind and uh, and uh, he was very influential in the 2016 and the interpretation of the 2016 presidential election and the mostly the primary against Hillary Clinton and uh, and uh, Bernie Sanders. He was very much in the mix and is a highly respected a highly respected YouTuber, right? So so he so I did the I did a piece yesterday kind of talking about his you could watch it down below. It's my last video, right? And and uh, so AJ watches it, right? That's what he's got to say. That's fucking fucking old machine. Let's go. Times article I'll read. I want to give a shout out to a gentleman named Marcus Conti. He, I hope I'm pronouncing this last name correctly. He did a segment on me. <laughs> I did. And it at first I was like, is it a dis this segment? Because like a lot of people have been doing these segments on me for some reason. I don't know why, but he. Did a really tastefully done. It's like two minutes. Really hilarious. I guess I look like the guy from Adam's Family, the um, the bald headed uh, uncle or Uncle Fester. What his guy's name? So he he spliced up me and then, but he was saying some really nice things about me. So um, it was it's a hilarious segment. 
especially with me and the um, Adams Family guy, which is actually funny. Like, so I I enjoyed it. Um, Come on, AJ. And he said some things about my um, my analysis of the Clinton Foundation that were very cool. He has a very interesting channel. This is not an endorsement of any viewpoints. Come on. Although I can say that this guy Marcus Conti seems to be his own man. Seems to. Um, you know, do his own thing in life, which I respect. Um, doesn't seem to pander to any group at all and just speak from his heart, which is what I do, which is why, like, people on the left and right don't like me. You know, a lot of people don't like me. A lot of people do like me. But um, Marcus Conti, thank you for your um, your video, your segment about me. And, uh, you deserve it. It was, <laughs> it was very interesting and awesome. So this guy has like 6,446 subs. I'm telling you. Come on, I'm sell it, H.A. You he's going to sell get it. 30 to 40,000 uh, in the near future. And then on to 100,000 if he keeps on doing what he's doing. And I'm not going like, anywhere. I've, I've looked at um, channels and they're, they were, they, they, they were like at 10,000, 20,000, and then they're like at 200,000. And I just... This gentleman, I think, is going to be a lot higher in terms of subs pretty soon. But Marcus Conti, very interesting segment. Thank you for, you know, uh, enjoying my stuff, my work. Anyway, really quickly, well, not really quickly, but. So that's it. Alex Jones. So now he goes on to talk about Alex Jones. So that's, that's pretty cool, right? That's fucking AJ Goo, man. That's like I was. A, that's like a. That's like a teen idol. That's like Elvis coming out of the fucking, coming up from the dead, talking about talking about you, man. Fucking Elvis Presley. Uh, so here's the real shit, right? Marcus Conti reporting. <clears throat> so. So um, so this is the uh, so is the stock market ready to crash? Let's talk about it, right? Everybody says, oh, the uh, the market. There's something going on. Didn't you hear that? There's something going on behind the scenes. Some something very very. Uh, uh, big <laughs> is going to happen, right? right? So let's look at it, right? So here's the stock market, right? This is the S&P 500, right? So S&P 500, right? Let this, uh, I just have to hit this one button right here so it clicks in. Right, so the S&P 500 is a, is a uh, average, right? See? Let me just try to get it to kick in. Oh, see, there it is, clear, see? The S&P 500 this is about the last six months. Actually, it's 2017. This is about the whole this is about the whole Trump era, <clears throat> right here in terms of the 500 top equities on uh, on the uh, S&P 500. And there you see at the top it's 27.93, right? And um, but when you look over here, right? This is this is current, right? You see the double bottom. See where it bottoms out. And then it bottoms out again. <clears throat> That's actually very strong. It's called a double bottom. And it's it's actually a very bullish sign that the market will it tests a bottom and then it 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 makes a run and then it breaks out. You see where it happened over here? I right, see it double bottoms and then it continues to creep up. So you have a similar thing going on. Although it collapsed at the top, it did break the top. Now this is all technical analysis. I'm not making this up. This is this is this is actual, actually what's going on. Now, we, we love a good economy, right? We love a good stock market, right? Because when there's a good stock market, that means you're, gonna, you're benefiting from the good stock market, right? right yeah, okay. So, so here's the good stock market, right? And um, let's look back. So, so that's the last two years. But what happened, you know, what's, what's before that, right? So check this shit out, right? This is, this, is the, uh, this is all the way back. Just let it clear. Let it. I don't know why it doesn't autofocus. Let's give it a second. So you gotta, here it is. So let's look over here first. See that? See, this is the Bush era. Right? This is Bush over here. Right? It's 2002 to 2008. And then you see this collapse right here. See this collapse? Bang. Fucking rip. Right? <clears throat> That's when Obama got elected. Right? Now, everybody loves to hate Obama. Obama gets elected and bang, the market crashes, right? <clears throat> all It gave back all of the Bush era profits and then some because you could see it, right? He was Bush and then 
all those profits got they got given back, right? And you see the bottom lines are volume. That means heavy, heavy selling. Right? See how the lines go the, the lines on the bottom are more? And then what you have is this slow creep up throughout the Obama era. Right? All the way till till uh to the present, right? And right? so you see that double bottom again, right? What is this? Right? You see that double bottom? When you look in the when you look on the bigger bigger picture, it's the one up it's all the way up there, right? See that? It's up in the corner. So what does it mean? Right? What does it all mean? The market is doing well, but during Obama, right? You remember when the when the market crashed and then the banks were fucked and all these corporations couldn't bail they couldn't they couldn't get out of it, right? And so what happened? Obama bailed them out, right? Obama didn't necessarily want to do that, but the TARP money, right? You remember the TARP money? All right, so here's what I want to tell you, right? There is absolutely no indication whatsoever of a market crash based on the money, right? Technical analysis is not a theory. This is the actual money. This is the actual placing of money on the stock market. And based on this analysis... Based on this this current this current trend right here, there is absolutely no sign of a bull, of a bear market or reversal. In fact, there's actual signs of building a base at the bottom, double bottom, and then making a second run up. Now, what would you rather have? A market crash like in 2009, where the market bottoms out under Obama because of the fear, right? This guy was a un he wasn't supposed to win. He was a wild card. He was an outsider, right? And 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 the people rose up. See, here's the deal about Obama. Obama was a young man. And he believed in his he didn't know what he doesn't he doesn't know the full, you know, breadth of how markets work. But he knew he had his finger on a pulse of, of America and Americans. And people believed in him. And he believed that he could fix the problem and all that, right? So when he got in there, he was yakking away with the message for the people, right? And what happens? The, the, the fucking stock market doesn't want to hear that. They want to hear enslave everybody, right? And and give us tax breaks so we can make more money and park more money, unregulate everything so we can make more and more money and not give not reciprocate at all. Why? Because trickle-down economics is a lie. It never works. It doesn't work. It didn't work. The guy who invented it, Alan Greenspan, under Reagan, said we were wrong. Corporations don't reciprocate. You can give them all the breaks in the world, and they take the money, and they put it in their pocket, or they send it offshore. And, and, right? So they don't, they don't fucking... The idea of trickle-down economics doesn't work. Right? So what happens? Right? Right? And... Here's Obama coming and say, break up the banks and, and oh shit, yeah, we're gonna give out we're gonna we're gonna work for the people, right? We're gonna work on behalf of the people, right? Progressive values, right? Right? That's what happened. And then you get a crash, right? So what happened in two thousand nine is that a guy named Timothy Geithner, right? He was a Goldman Sachs plant, right? See Bush's guy, Secretary of the Treasury was uh Paulson, right? Whatever the fuck his first name was. Paulson. He's on the dollar bill, right? So Paulson was the Secretary of Treasury under Bush. And then when Bush law when when Obama won, you then had Timothy Geithner was his pick, the young Timothy Geithner, right? But he was they both both Goldman Sachs guys. They both were fucking top players at Goldman Sachs, right? The bankers, they took over, right? So Hey Obama, you want the fucking economy to, to to bounce back they were in his ear they're in obama's ear right trying to get him to shut the fuck up and stop bashing the market right right give us the money the tarp money yeah 700 billion yeah give us the money give us the money right and he got all the democrats and they all got paid and barney frank and all these all these fucking jerk off congressmen all took the money and none of the bankers went to jail for destroying the economy for you know, highly illegal, all insider trading. It's that's that's another subject, but and you, we can, if you don't think I know what I'm talking about, then we'll debate it another time. But what I want to try to say right now is that what you have is when when Obama. This is this is the, the summation. When Obama came in, and the market crashed, 
if it would have stayed down and there would have been no bailout, we would have been in a better place because then the economy would have would have readjusted to suit the American people. Instead, what we got is a, is the biggest transfer of wealth in the history of America, right? Where no one knew what to do about the, the crash. So what, what Geithner and these other idiots did under the direction of, uh, you know, under the direction of Obama is that they, they gave all the power to the six banks. They bailed out city Lehman brothers went out of business, but they bet they AIG went out of business, but a lot of the banks, JP Morgan, Wells Fargo city, right? Right, they they all they got the they got the 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 money, and then they constructed a a economy that suits them, and the idea was that they would eventually reciprocate. But what they never do, right? So they so the people got fucked, right? So what I'm trying to tell you is this: that although we see, we saw a crash under Obama and said, "Oh, that's bad." But in actuality, what we have under Trump is no panic whatsoever. Right? We have a steady, from the time he comes in, a steady climb upward. What does that tell you? It tells you that it, it, tell, it tells you that the banks and the large organizations that control the stock market like Trump. They like he's a, he's, he's a guy on their side. Right, he's on the side of the, the the corporations. Give them more tax breaks. Let them steal even more money. Fuck the workers. I I know it's hard to listen to. I know I know you guys love love Trump, right? But you love him. But listen to what's going on because the evidence is in the stock market. The markets, the people that you're railing against, the deep state, the big corporations, the billionaire class, right? Those are the people. Those are the fucking enemies right now. Mostly the billionaire class, the the top one percent of the of the country, right? Those are the guys that are holding you back because no matter how much wealth accrues, they they take it back. So they have a friend in Trump, right? Because Trump can go out in front of the podium and say, "Yeah, fucking people, oh, America, rah. yeah, America first. We're gonna make America great again, right? We're making America great again, right?" And these guys are, 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 they love it because he's playing both sides of the coin. Trump gets you to vote for him and create a, the illusion of, of, of prosperity in America. And people eat it up because they like, they want to believe in Trump. They want to believe in something that's going to, that, that something big is going to happen, right? Everybody's going to, he's going to lock up all the bad guys. And the, the bad guys are calling the shots, right? Right. So, so what I'm trying to say is that when, when the market crashed under Obama, if we could have could have ridden that that out without bailing out the banks, without giving the banks everything that they wanted, and still giving them everything they want, we could have created a a new deal for America where there was universal health care. We could have deleted student loans. We could have done a lot of uh, make money available for small businesses and not just the billionaire class and the corporations, right? Okay, the final comment is this, because people, they get nervous. They say, Conti, I got my 401k plan. My, my, my retirement plan is tied into the stock market. Okay, here's what happens, right? When, when the stock markets crash, you lose, right? So every so often when the markets crash, the, the big banks sell into that sell-off. Yeah, they take a hit, but not their compensation, not their, in, their individual compensation, even in a down market, CEOs still get a raise, right? The, 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 the traders still make money, right? Everybody in the bank makes money because they're making money on the way down. It's called a short sale. They're selling into the, they're selling into the buying. They, they're playing the opposite side of the market, right? Always. Wall Street is always on the other side of the, of the trade. So what I'm trying to tell you is that even if you think that you should defend uh, and and pray for a a up market. You, you're 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 wrong, right? You want the markets to crash. Yeah, I know, I know. I, I you got your four hundred one k plan, but that's short sighted because what you get in exchange for a getting these bankers and all these money grabbers and all these middlemen out of the way is you get a real 
a real view of the American spirit. You get a new, a new world, a new American order. I almost said world order, a new American deal, a deal for the American people, and there, there lies the prosperity. That's what I'm trying to say. So, in summary, the markets show no signs of a, of a, uh, a reversal or a crash. There's nothing big in terms of, in terms of what I see. Just gazing at the uh, the S and P 500, you can look at the Dow, you can look at the Nasdaq. It's all the same, right? The the, the S and P is probably the best one to look at. So, um, so keep you know keep your fingers crossed. Q's going to save the day. <laughs> all right, it's a big change coming. Marcus Conti reporting.